this is Mark from BoatsAndBikes.com, and today we're checking out the Marlin by Prion. Now, Prion's a German company that's been building kayaks for several decades, and they're, they're really well regarded for their quality and innovation, but Prion is probably best known for sort of blazing their own trail. Uh, innovation, doing things a little bit differently. But probably the most innovative piece is that Prion chooses to blow mold their kayaks when everyone else in the world roto molds. Now, blow molding consists of an extruded plastic tube that's heated and blown up like a balloon inside of a steel mold. It's all done in one piece, so there's no seams or weak spots. And what you get out of this is a hole that's noticeably more rigid and, to me, seemingly more durable than comparable roto molded boats. They're really divinely stiff, and it feels more to me like a hard hold boat. Um, and then, of course, prions are quite scratch resistant as well. But the rest of the design is pretty interesting as well. This Marlin uses a very large neoprene hatch, and it's covered by a plastic hard hatch, where most companies use a rubber deck. They also use this deck netting, where most companies use bungee straps or lashing. Now, aside from the hull, my favorite innovation is the usable day hatch situated for the cockpit. And inside you get this neoprene waterproof sack. So unlike uh, rear day hatches, this hatch is really easily accessible while on the water. You can see what's in it, and it's really a perfect place to store things like your camera or your phone. Now, the decking sits fairly high, so there's plenty of room for longer legs and larger feet. And the outfitting's pretty good, too. I was pretty comfortable uh, for a long all-day paddle, but I did find the knee position a little high, and it took some getting used to. Now, this Marlin has a rudder as well, and all Prion Ocean boats are rudder-ready if you choose to get one as an option, or, of course, you can add it later. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, at the stats on this boat. Um, this boat is 17 and a half feet long. It's a surprising 23 inches wide. feels narrower. Uh, they claim a weight of 51 pounds. Um, we can all argue advertised weights, of course. Uh, and it's a boat that is rated for up to about a 200-pound paddler. That actually surprised me because it felt like a boat that should have handled much more, and I think it would. Um, now, the whole design is a multi-chine affair. There's this center spine flat section that runs the middle length of the boat, and there are two defined chines that run along the sides. Uh, the bow has a speed type entry, and the stern has a, a very nicely defined keel, uh, which keeps this Marlin going nice and straight. Now, let's talk about performance on the water. There's two things that become immediately apparent. The first is that the knee position is pretty high, and it sort of feels like you're on top of the water. Now, it's not inherently good or bad. It's just a little bit different than what I'm used to. And though, personally, I really prefer to be a little bit lower and more laid out, um, I would also you know, tend to like to pad down the cockpit a bit for custom fitting. The second thing that becomes pretty apparent is that the narrow flat spot on that hole makes the boat feel as if you are sort of balancing on a rail. Now, when you turn this boat with a lean, it sort of feels as if you fall off the rail, and then it stops. Um, it's a little bit hard to describe. We're not really talking here about primary or secondary stability. It, it's more that she feels narrower than her 23-inch beam until you put her on a lean, and then she feels 23 inches. It, it's really unique, but from a paddling perspective, she's fast. The narrow spine allows the boat to move quickly, um, in fact, this boat definitely did not need the rudder, and I preferred the boat without it. Just to clarify, I'm a rudder and skeg fan, and I use them regularly. Um, there's really only a handful of boats that I believe are better without a directional aid device, uh, and the Marlin is definitely one of them. She stays straight, she paddles true, um, and although I haven't paddled her in heavy winds, I suspect that she doesn't get blown around real, real easily. So, you can definitely edge this boat. Due to the multi-chines, you can put her up on the side, and as I mentioned, the 23 inches, you know, it does fall off that center rail, but then you put it on the side, it feels plenty stable, and you can spin the boat. She's definitely a straight-line dragster, but she does turn, too. So, I can see this boat really being excellent for someone who is looking to uh, step up to a more challenging, fast tour, maybe looking for a fast exercise boat, 
Um, she would probably be fun in the rough stuff too, although I haven't tried that out. Uh, but certainly she would be great for fast extended trips, plenty of room. Um, but new paddlers may find her a little tough to get used to. It is a unique ride. Uh, I do recommend trying this boat out before you buy this boat. Uh, and I think that folks looking for a playboat will find her waterline and length um, to be probably a disadvantage. You know, she, she's much more of a go places type of boat than a playboat. Um, she has a uh, forward directional inclination as opposed to a, a surfing or spinning inclination. So let's talk about the boat. Well built, excellent strength and rigidity. She's definitely scratch resistant. I love their hulls. Fast straight liner, but does have the edging capability. I didn't find or need the rudder. Um, on the downside, she's slightly outdated as far as the hatch systems go. She has that fall off center feeling, which I think you get used to, but it is there. And she also has that high knee and deck position, which you're either gonna love or hate. Hey, thanks for listening. This is Mark from Boats and Bikes.